Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, my pleasure to welcome you at the um, uh, one of the, uh, the the events of Romanian of the Romanian program at the London Book Fair. Um, and uh, I would say one of the one of the important, the most important uh, events um, in our program. Uh, because uh, we have, uh, as guests, uh, some very, uh, very interesting uh, authors and some uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful books will be uh, will be presented. Um, it is a, um, a tradition with the Romanian program at the London Book Fair to have the um, to have this uh, collect collective launching uh, event in which we present the latest uh, publications by Romanians or with Romanian... Welcome, you know, just don't be shy. You know, so, uh, I'll prolong my uh, introductory speech so that everybody is uh, comfortable in the end. So um, uh, it is our tradition to have this, uh, this um, L launching events uh, where we present the latest books by Romanians or with Romanian themes, with Romanian subjects. Uh, because as, um, as, uh, as I have often said, we are fighting the 5%. We are fighting the 5% every day, every, uh, every week, every year, and that 5% is the number, the percent of translations in English by foreign authors. It is a, such a small, uh, small number of uh, books in translations that are published that we feel every new book by a Romanian or with a Romanian subject or theme, it's a huge victory. And indeed it is a huge, uh, huge victory. So our, we are always very excited to have this, uh, uh, this event. Come on, come on in. Um, to, to have this, uh, this event. I, I think uh, this year we have um, a particularly um, a good crop of, uh, of new books and I'll have the pleasure to introduce the authors and, uh, and the books in the following, um, in the following uh, minutes. Uh, and in the end, I will, uh, of course, or any time you, uh, you feel the urge to, uh, to intervene, please do so, because we want to see, to see, we see this event as a dialogue, as a conversation about these books, about the authors, about the, the ideas that are uh, expressed uh, throughout, this, um, throughout this meeting. Um, as you see, I have a lot of uh, uh, papers here, and I've done my homework, but um, as usual in these cases, I can't remember much. So uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll start with, um, uh, with a, remarkable, uh, a remarkable publication, a, truly, uh, a book truly hailed as, uh, as an event, as an editorial uh, event. Um, um, one that is um, that is not only amazing but also very difficult and challenging, and that's why I'll have the right interlocutors because I'm obviously not able to um, sustain a conversation about uh, about this book. Uh, although I like it, uh, I like it very much. And uh, the name of this book is um, uh, Romanian literature and w as world literature. And it's so uh, precious that um, the publishing house has not been able to send it to, uh, uh, to Waterstones in order for us to present it. It's such a, such a, um, a, a, a precious object that uh, you can see it only via the internet. And uh, I'm sure uh, after this presentation you will uh, rush to your computers and, uh, and order it. It is a, it's an interesting book, it's a difficult book. It's a book, um, first of all, it's a book um, um, uh, coordinated, I should say, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, created many, many respects as, as an idea, as a structure um, by um, two, of my, uh, two of my guests, um, uh, Professor uh, uh, 
Cristian Moraru and uh, Professor Andrei Terian, and I will uh, I will introduce them uh, shortly. But before that, I, I'd like to say that um, uh, the book has uh, several authors. It's a collection of uh, contributions, of essays. And by God, it reads like who's who in the uh, Romanian literary academic establishment. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's the title of the book. I, I said it. You, you didn't pay attention. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but I will repeat it, I will, uh, um, so, uh, uh, so uh, really, really some of the, some of the, best, uh, the best words in Romanian academia uh, have contributed to this, uh, to this book. Uh, I see here names like Caius Dovrescu, Carmen Mușat, uh, Paul Cernat, uh, Mihai Iovanel, Mircea Martin, uh, Bogdan Ștefănescu, Doris Mironescu, Mihaela Ursa, so names that are um, uh, very influential in uh, today's um, uh, today's uh, academic world in uh, in Romania and not only Romania. I would say that um, I don't know. I mean, this book is, deals a lot with uh, a, a very a burning complex in Romanian literature. That's of our uh, national literature becoming more universal, more better known. Uh, but I should say that these contributions and a book like this is already very universal and very, very, I mean, the standard is, uh, is um, so high that uh, these problems of, uh, you know, universal circulation would not, um, would not uh, apply. Um, Professor uh, Moraru has asked me to um, uh, to uh, allow him to read uh, a couple of ideas, and then maybe we, we can uh, continue with the conversation and with the dialogue with Professor Teriano as well. Before that, I'd like to introduce introduce Professor uh, Moraru, um, who is a um, class of 1949 distinguished professor in uh, humanities and professor of English at the University of North Carolina. Uh, Greensboro. He specializes in contemporary American fiction, critical theory, and comparative literature with an emphasis on international postmodernism and its post Cold War developments and successors, as well as on the relations uh, between globalism and culture across several national traditions uh, in the modern era. His recent publications include monographs such as. Postmodernism, American narrative, late globalization, and the cultural imaginary, imaginary uh, published by University of Michigan Press in 2011. Reading for the Planet Toward Geo Methodology, University of Michigan Press 2015. He is the editor of Postcommunism, Postmodernism, and the Global Imagination, Columbia University Press 2009, as well as co editor of the uh, planetary turn, rationality and geoaesthetics in the 21st century, published by Northwestern University Press in 2015. And of course, Romanian literature as world literature, the book we are, um, we are presenting, uh, presenting tonight, in which um, I gather you have uh, written the introductory, uh, the introductory article, the, introduc uh, the introduction, I should say, which um, it develops uh, a theory that, again, uh, I might not be able to talk about, but definitely I may be able to ask you about okay. it. Right. So uh, before uh, starting our conversation, um, would you like to read a, a couple of sure. pages okay. and then we'll, yeah. uh, we'll continue with that, right. okay? And I'll pause the microphone oh, as well. Uh, this is not mine, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Do I need a mic? No. All right. So here we go. <coughs> Such a pleasure to be here and speak to you about our recent book, Romanian Literature as World Literature. This is an essay collection. The contributions to which were workshops are the first edition of the Poltinish Critical Theory Institute. There is something like that. The Poltinish <laughs> Critical Theory Institute uh, outside the city of Sibiu, uh, Romania, in October 2015. And then co edited by Professor Mircea Martin, Professor Terian, and, and myself. So we are the three co-editors of, of, of the body. And uh, 
Professor Terian and, uh, and myself, we have to uh, offer the uh, introduction. A world premiere, the book is one of a kind in any number of ways. Given its subject, there isn't just anything like this, nothing like this, um, uh, like this volume out there, no matter how you look at it. But the collection's uniqueness also stems from the sort of questions the editors and the institute participants raised back in 2015. And one of the most Im important among those questions was this. What can Romanian critics do to present effectively Romanian literature to the world? Key here is, of course, presentation, or if you will, criticism as a 21st century art of presentation, of making known and otherwise drawing contemporary international audiences, in particular other critics, but not only specialized public, to this little known entity called Romanian literature. What I'm talking about is, of course, methodology first and foremost, but methodology is never innocent, politically and otherwise. And I'll get to that uh, momentarily. I'm also talking about a more general fashion and venue of presentation from language, audience, and publication arena to tactical or just practical ways of engaging readerships who may not know a lot, who may not know a whole lot about Romanian literature, and in general, those others whom we often ignore as we talk about ourselves to the world. So I'm not referring to what the Romanian government or agencies should do, even though, of course, I'm, I'm really thankful to our colleagues from the Romanian Cultural Institute and uh, our Waterstones gracious host for this opportunity. Nor am I worried about translation, and, and I'm not concerned about how few people in the world read Romanian either, about Romania's ability to push its literature into culturally oversaturated world markets, to overcome global competition for international attention and so forth. All of these matters, of course, and it is touched on in the book, but none of this makes up the volume's main thrust. So let us imagine, we said back in 2015, that it would be up to Romanian critics, to the criticism they write or should write, to how they present themselves as they present their subject matter, that it would be up to them then to introduce Romanian literature to a world that has reached a point where self-described marginal cultures have become a real post-exotic inert. What would make such an introduction again successful, perhaps memorable, and by the same token possibly a sea change in Romanian criticism? So this was a, an important question to us. I would suggest to you that in the, book, in the book's introduction, preface, and 15 essay, our collective answer was the right one at this juncture in world intellectual history when critics and humanists worldwide are asking themselves a, a certain set of new questions. Specifically, our response and, and the book itself eventually had to do with a certain way of intervening in a major ongoing conversation in 21st century crisis and even in debates outside the study of literature in hopes, among other things, of drawing scholars who may be interested, if not in Romanian literature per se, then at least in the broader critical theoretical issues with which we engage head on across Romanian literature as world literature. Our book appeared a few months ago in Bloomsbury series called Literatures as World Literature, and the name is telling for the volume's overall approach and disciplinary affiliation, World Literature. This is very simply speaking, the latest metamorphosis, world literature itself, is the latest metamorphosis of comparative literature, the discipline. It is, of course, well known that one of the defining developments in the literary humanities since the end of the Cold War, as a direct result of the expansion of globalization scholarship into the new millennium across and beyond by the now classical post-colonial model of inquiry, has been the radical transformation of the study of national literatures. What does that mean? On the one hand, and most fundamentally, this study has gone, um, <coughs> um, the study of national literature has gone increasingly compared. Accordingly, formations of nationhood, whether we talk about the nation state, national constructions of race, gender, and ethnicity, or literature, have been increasingly re-examined within a world framework. And these reassess reassessments have been theorized usually with some help from Immanuel Wallerstein's World Systems Theory, Pascal Casanova's World Republic of Letters, and so forth. I will not bore you here with more bibliography other than to say that the worlding of our literary disciplines and individual endeavors, they're coming together 
in the world arena is one of the, the most consequential processes marking the, the latest two decades. On the other hand, the new world literature avatar of comparative literature, doing, say, comparative American studies or compari comparative Romanian studies with a world literature twist, has proved in the work of some of its practitioners illuminating, indeed, empowering both epistemologically and politically. In other words, the critical paradigm I am talking about has allowed not only for new readings of whole national traditions and individual authors' bodies of work, but also for the repositioning of these, or some of these, patrimonies on the world map of literary values in a less hierarchical, more non-hegemonic fashion. A new literary world order seems now possible beyond naive utopias and Pollyannish daydreams. A substantial presence in this axiological makeup of the planet is also available to literature such as Romanian. It is just that you have to make a strong case for it. Making this case is the, the overall objective of our book. In this sense, Romanian literature as world literature is a collective critical theoretical and political manifesto by 16 authors. They are for the, mo they are for the most part members of Professor Terian's generation. I think they mark together an important moment in Romanian intellectual history apropos of the international developments recent Romanian arts and letters have been in dialogue with. To my mind, this is the first series of critics that as a generation are entirely coeval with major trendsetting changes in critical theory. With them, in their individual works and now in this book, Romanian critical culture stops obsessing about catching up, getting synchronized with, as a term used to be, with hubs of critical theoretical innovation like Paris and US campuses and movements such as structuralist, post-structuralist, cultural studies, and so forth. This is because these critics have gotten past the point where the priority for various reasons is, is or was keeping up with the latest trend or fad. To paraphrase American writer John Barth, these critics have the last uh, half of century, intellectually speaking, under their belt, not on their back. Therefore, they are now in, in a position to effectuate creative interventions of equal footing in the recent, recent conversation about world literature and the much needed critique of methodological nationalism. And they do so in the book in ways that are not only relevant and potentially foundational for a new way to understand and study Romanian literature, but also susceptible to move this debate forward and make their way on Romanian literatures, literature significant for the reading of other national literatures for comparative literature, world literature, and literary and cultural theory broadly. But let me tell you who the critics are. Okay? Their name, Andrei Terian, Bogdan Kretsu, Kais Dobrescu, Alex Goldish, Carmen Mushak, Mircha Agiakonu, uh, Imre Josef Balash, Ovidiu Morar, Paul Chernak, Mihai Ovanel, Mircha Martin, Bogdan Stefanescu, Teodora Dumitru, Doris Mironescu, uh, and Mihaela Lursi. As a whole, their contributions can be summed up as an, as an answer to another important question. Is Romanian literature a world literature? Their answer is affirmative with a proviso, as we say in the book's preface, that, and I quote, I will quote in a moment. <laughs> Here we go. The ways in which a literature participates in, in actually fosters a world and acquires a certain presence and stature in it are no longer a foregone conclusion, a given, or a function of that literature's historically privileged or underprivileged position in a hierarchically organized and economically politically constituted literary world system. Lose as it may be, the system does exist, but we think we've reached a moment in the history of the world, world literature and literary criticism, where the case for the place, value, and interpretation traditionally assigned to various aspects and segments of world literary practices in the world as world can be remade, whether we talk about individual writers or about a set of works, styles, genres, movements, or literary units known as national, be they Romanian, German, French, or American. What counts, of course, is the strength of the case, right, you're trying to make. Again, how effectively we present ourselves. Now, since we are in the UK, we can say the proof is in the pudding. All we can hope is that the book will be read and used. Not only do we think this is a work of reference, but it is the only reference, the only resource, we argue, that introduces in a 21st century language, not just English, but also a certain methodology and rhetoric of presentation, 
Romanian literature to 21st century world audiences. It does so polemically, which is why we describe this book as a manifesto. And it is a manifesto insofar as the presentation in question is inevitably positioning itself against the nationalist modality of reading national literature in Romania and elsewhere. This sort of reading is still anachronistically yet aggressively dominant, right? The nationalist modality. Dominant perhaps more so in Romania than, in, than elsewhere. Hence the urgency, we argue, of drawing certain interpretation models less wedded to the now, up, to the now obsolete romantic fantasy of territorialist organicist culture. The latter, we also suggest, undermines the, pre uh, undermines the presentation, the critic's performance on a stage inescapably bigger than the residential jurisdiction of, of said fantasy, rendering mainstream criticism an outdated in-joke on otherwise very serious subjects, such as Karajali, Father and Son, as top shelf authors of the Planet's Library of Babel, the Romanian Trgoviste School, as a cluster of writers connected and originally feeding into the post-World War II webs of meta literature, autofiction, and magical realism. The young writers of the 1980s as members of the supranational postmodern sodality, Romanian literature as world literature. Thank you. Professor Moral has uh, made my job so much easier because uh, he has answered to all the questions that I have not um, put yet. But um, of course, um, it was such a good introduction to our uh, to our conversation, and probably we will have the chance to. Um, to talk about this, uh, these topics with Professor um, uh, Terian and also with Professor Jon Bogdan Lefter. I will uh, introduce them to, uh, very, very um, uh, quickly. Um, because I really want to deepen some of the, some of the, uh, some of the ideas, this idea of manifesto, of uh, controversy, of polemics. You know, why that? Why this... Uh, uh, of generation even, because as you rightly said, uh, the majority of the authors, with a couple of exceptions, uh, belong to a, um, a, a, the younger generation of, uh, of academics. Uh, Professor Andrei Terian is the Dean of the Faculty of Letters and Arts and Professor of Romanian Literature at the Department of Romance Studies of the Lucian Blaga University of uh, Sibiu, Romania. By the way, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, place. Not only because the literature literature department is very good, because it's an old medieval uh, city right in the center of Transylvania. He's also a senior researcher. Um, uh, we, we do cultural tourism as well, so that's why I'm combining <laughs> this. <laughs> he is uh, also a senior researcher with the George Kalinescu Institute of Literary History and Theory, uh, Literary History and Theory of the Romanian Academy. His latest books include the co-authored reference series uh, General Dictionary of Romanian Literature, seven volumes published between 2004 and 2009, and Chronology of Romanian Literary Life, 1944-1964, 10 volumes, 2010-2013, as well as Romanian Literature as World well, Literature, um, again, this, um, uh, this groundbreaking uh, volume in, uh, in many, many respects. And now very, very quickly, because, uh, before I, uh, I pass the floor to you, Professor Terian, I just want to introduce uh, Professor uh, Jon Bogdan uh, Lefter. Um, is, um, is, um, uh, Jon Bogdan Lefter is um, a literary critic and historian, cultural and political analyst. Professor at the uh, University of Bucharest, Faculty of Letters, uh, Director of the PhD program um, of the Faculty of Letters, um, a visiting professor at the University of Amsterdam, the Netherlands in the 90s, and between 1992 and 1994. Uh, he has uh, taught at various universities in Europe and the United States of America. Um, uh, after 1990, um, he was the, the director of the first postmodern literary wave, uh, a representative of the first postmodern literary wave in Romania during the 80s, and after 1990, director of the Liter Litera Publishing House, founder and director of Contrapunct, Counterpoint, between 1990 and 1992, um, Observator Cultural, uh, 
2000 and 2005. These are, uh, these are literary cultural, uh, cultural magazines. And um, Altitudi, between 2006 and 2000, 2009. Author of numerous books, um, uh, just uh, randomly, uh, randomly name um, some of them. Postmodernism, pages from the dossier of a cultural battle on identity, the topics of postmodernity, uh, a guide to Romanian literature, this is in English, novels, experiment, and post-communist book industry, um, several, uh, several uh, dictionaries, uh, among which uh, Romanian writers of the 80s and, uh, and uh, 90s. Um, a former of, uh, director in Romania, Bucharest Bureau Chief and Political Analyst of Radio Free uh, Europe, also Political Analyst of BBC between 2004 and 2008, at present, a uh, political commentator of Romania Radio, uh, Romania Radio, Radio Romania Actualități, so the national broadcast, uh, as well as various televisions, DG24 and, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and others. So uh, I, I hope this uh, presentation uh, has introduced uh, my, um, um, my uh, next uh, speaker. So Professor Terian, I will start with you. Why, uh, why a manifesto? If you can, uh, um, uh, can uh, we can come back to this idea of a manifesto. Why is this book polemical? Why is this book um, ch challenging? Is in in many respects the sort of uh, orthodoxy of uh, um, the Romanian the the, the the general understanding of Romanian literature as national literature. Uh, Yes, thank you for uh, for your question. Uh, I will try to answer it, although it is uh, uh, difficult to add uh, something to, to the very thorough and comprehensive uh, presentation of the book uh, Professor Morado already made. Uh, um, well, from my uh, uh, point of view, uh, this book is a manifesto because. Uh, um, uh, the question why manifesto relates to the question why uh, is Romanian literature a world literature and uh, if it really is uh, why nobody noticed this uh, until now uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the answer is common to uh, all these questions because uh, uh, what we uh, tried uh, to do in this book was to operate a change uh, in perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, the usual strategy in uh, trying to uh, demonstrate that uh, Romanian literature is uh, uh, world literature was uh, until now to a sort of uh, peak approach. I mean, uh, the attempt to identify various peaks of Romanian literature, such as uh, uh, I don't know, Choran, uh, Eliade, Ionesco, and uh, 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 of course it is uh, uh, um, not uh, hard to notice that this kind of approach uh, usually took you to a protochronist approach since uh, the number of... Uh, uh, what does it mean, protochronist? I don't think uh, it's a uh, term in circulation. Attempt, in uh, an attempt uh, to force the priority uh, or to uh, mystify the priority of various Romanian uh, authors uh, in order to uh, demonstrate their alleged priority um, at the world level. Mm -hmm. um, either by inventing various uh, 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 forerunners such as uh, the uh, various Latin poets mm -hmm. uh, uh, or uh, uh, medieval uh, authors, etc., uh, uh, or by uh, uh, over interpreting uh, the various uh, work uh, works uh, of the Romanian so-called uh, classics. Well, so this book runs against this yes, uh, yes, very much this uh, process. Um, uh, I can offer you an, uh, uh, a counter example, but uh, first, uh, perhaps I should. Uh, uh, define uh, what uh, I would like to call a, a systemic approach, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which means that uh, we uh, try to uh, show that um, uh, Romanian uh, literature uh, 
uh, was a work uh, is a world literature, uh, not because uh, it uh, uh, includes uh, 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 many uh, so-called big authors, but uh, um, uh, in uh, uh, its uh, wordness resigns in the fact that uh, it is uh, a part of the world and uh, uh, we can uh, achieve a better understanding of world literature by understanding Romanian literature. It is a part of a network and uh, its uh, uh, forms, uh, structures, destinies are entangled mm -hmm. with uh, all uh, world literature. Um, uh, this is, for instance, what I uh, uh, attempted to do in my uh, essay, which is the first essay in the book, uh, and uh, 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 which analyzes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not by coincidence, uh, the so-called uh, Romanian national poet, Mihai Eminescu. Um, and uh, the basic thesis of my uh, essay is not that uh, Eminescu invented uh, uh, symbolism or modernism or postmodernism, uh, etc. Uh, did, but right? uh, <laughs> well, Everybody uh, knows it. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, that um, uh, Eminescu uh, addresses in a very particular uh, way uh, uh, one of the uh, contemporary um, uh, a contemporary cultural uh, issue and the cultural complex, uh, the so-called uh, Orientalist. Mm -hmm. Eminescu uh, did not in invent Orientalist, uh, or, and uh, he did not end it. But uh, he had a very uh, particular understanding of uh, this phenomenon, especially of the representations uh, of the East, of the Orient in the Romanian uh, um, uh, literature and culture. It is important to say that um, uh, that this book is uh, deals with several very important uh, Romanian writers, but it's, uh, the structure is very interesting. It's, um, it's uh, structured in three parts. One dealing with the, uh, the like the big names or the big problems of uh, of uh, the national literature in its way to um, to uh, you know, any new world circulation uh, universe. Um, but there are uh, chapters and there are um, 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 parts that are very specific that uh, are uh, goes that go very very deeply in, into analysis. So one reader can find. Um, um, overviews and theories and, and very, very wide approaches, uh, and at the same time, a very, um, very detailed analysis of some, uh, uh, some uh, authors. And, um, and, uh, and I, I think this, this structure works uh, very, very well, because uh, especially for, uh, for readers who are not necessarily very much aware of the of the Romanian literature. Why listening to, uh, to you, I, I thought that probably we are not very much a world literature in Great Britain because our circulation is um, uh, is um, sadly not uh, not that much. But definitely we will um, we will uh, try our best. And with the with uh, the, the book, uh, this book being published, I think we are on the on the right uh, on the right uh, track. Um, um, I'll, we'll, I'll, go, I'll get back a little bit about um, to the um, uh, to the uh, the idea of uh, uh, of uh, Orientalism and also of modernity. But I, I'd like to uh, pass the floor to uh, uh, to Professor uh, Lefter, and um, uh, I'd like to ask you why do you think this book touches a, a central issue, a central problem? In our literature, you have been uh, you have you have read uh, several books of um, literary history. Uh, you are a literary historian, very much as a, uh, a literary critic. Uh, so you are used to seeing the the things in a historical perspective. Why do you think that this approach uh, that is um, because I, I think we we must say and probably you speak about that that. The, the authors are um, uh, talking a lot about this literature that is formed at the intersection of many cultures and with a lot of imports, with a lot of um, 
a lot of influences. Why do you think this, it, it is an important uh, uh, approach, an important perspective for the Romanian culture in, or for the Romanian intellectual debate and for the Romanian culture in the world? Okay, I will answer to that, but uh, uh, firstly, let me uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. Thank you to the Romanian Culture Institute. Uh, I'm very glad and honored to be part of this book presentation evening. Uh, secondly, I would uh, uh, contradict uh, uh, Dorian Brana. He already contradicted himself. He uh, started by saying that he is not able to participate in a discussion about this book and these issues, and uh, in the meantime, he did uh, express himself. Uh, probably many people here, if not most of you, uh, know him as a cultural diplomat, as a director of the Women Cultural Institute, uh, with a quite now long career. Too uh, long for here in London, previously <laughs> as a director of the Women Cultural Institute in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, but there are people like me, maybe Magda and others, who know him and uh, Daciana Brana for a long time ago, <laughs> before their uh, world uh, <laughs> literature, <laughs> culture, even before theirs. And uh, they, are, uh, they are for a long time uh, outstanding intellectuals and authors, uh, essay writers, researchers, members of a quite famous in Romania, the group uh, based in Timisoara, uh, focused on uh, very interesting issues like modernity, post-modernity, <laughs> and especially, especially uh, Central Europe literature and culture. So uh, please uh, Professor, may, may, may I add one more thing? In fact, uh, Professor Lefter, uh, um, knows me even before the university times when I was a high school student and I enrolled and that's if you if I, I, I will prolong the 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 the, 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 um, uh, the, the revealing of this uh, biography I was a high school student I was 16 and I would enroll, I enrolled in a course in a class that was so important for me at the time and changed a lot in my life and that was a poetry course taught by Professor Lefter in a famous uh, retreat, a literary retreat of, uh, of a time for, for high school students. So, um, and you can imagine that's why I have invited <laughs> Professor Lefter because uh, this is how it works in Romania. <laughs> no, no, it is not a <laughs> um, uh, That reminds me of <laughs> plenty of other things, of course. Uh, it is interesting and it is in a way also provocative. I, I did feel like adding something and now maybe I'm trying to do that. Uh, when I listen to uh, Professor Morarus Christians, my, my old friend and colleague, uh, speech uh, about the change of uh, critical paradigm which has recently occurred, he said, I think it's not that recent and uh, he himself and our generation of uh, literary critics, uh, essay writers, researchers, in uh, back in the 80s and in over the 90s, uh, did push things and concepts and views along this direction. And the uh, Third Europe group, uh, focusing on uh, Central Europe in Timisoara and so on and so forth, did the same. Uh, at the time, Back in the 80s, uh, the last communist decade of our history, uh, still uh, a new wave of uh, young writers, Magda Kudmetsch, one of the protagonists, and uh, many others, uh, did uh, launch in Romania the big, uh, wide debate on postmodernism and the change, a shift from uh, what you have uh, today in the morning described as uh, the, the predominantly French influence over more than a century <laughs> on Romanian literature to the American uh, English-speaking uh, global influence. Um, and uh, at the time, uh, 
the language of criticism started to change and so on and so forth. And I'm also very glad to see that our students now um, are pushing things uh, forward and forward. Even uh, during those years in the 80s, uh, when we have started, uh, and uh, many other authors like uh, fiction writers, Nietzsche and Adelchu and Gheorghe Crăciun, uh, poets like uh, Magda Cârneci, uh, Mircea Cărtărescu, Florin Iaru, Matei Vișniec, and many, many others who are now uh, major writers uh, in, in their mid-age, uh, or even some of our colleagues have uh, already passed away, uh, sadly. Yeah. Um, these, uh, this, this movement, wide movement and wide phenomenon, um, did, uh, did change the cultural paradigm even during the last communist decade. And it was also possible, which nowadays, for instance, in Romania and in other Central European countries, former communist states, uh, is very difficult to explain even to the, our younger students today. They don't very well understand and easily understand how was it possible. Was it a dictatorship? It was. Totalitarianism? Yes. Censorship? Of course. But what was the real uh, action of all this? How did it happen? How much was it possible? How much, how far could the, the negotiation, so to put it, between uh, artists and uh, the system go? And uh, there were lots of things happening uh, besides censorship and uh, uh, official formal ideology. Among these things, uh, such uh, summer retreats with uh, young writers as we were in our late 20s or maybe 30s already, oh, and high, high, school, high school pupils uh, already writing poetry or their first, first uh, fiction pieces, uh, and uh, we were teaching them what postmodern is postmodernism was and is, and uh, uh, some of them I, uh, of course, later on uh, uh, met again uh, as uh, students of my own when I became in 1990 after the form of communism myself a university professor, or I met you and others uh, from other places in the country, uh, uh, already trained by us previously and uh, now uh, grown-up intellectuals and participating to all this phenomenon we are now describing and we will keep describing in this during this meeting, namely the uh, worldization of Romanian literature in a way, the, or better to put it, uh, the gradual revealing of, in fact, the natural <coughs> world profile of the Romanian literature as of any other national European literature. It is interesting that this book, uh, Romanian Literature as World Literature, uh, was published, uh, Christian uh, already said that, in a collection called Literatures as World Literature. And uh, uh, the first uh, book to be published, uh, the, the opening, uh, the uh, title was German Literature, as what well. literature, uh, that, that is a book about a culture uh, that has originated the concept of nation. And uh, uh, it is obvious that the German literature is national, and at the same time it is international, as uh, what we call world literature is a system, is a network, is a uh, a uh, interference of features which have in time along many centuries and even millennia uh, articulated into something which has its coherence, which is transnational. Um, uh, moreover, this uh, collection, this series of books, Literatures as World Literature, uh, with already about 10, uh, 10 or more books published, uh, includes both uh, this kind of uh, German, Romanian, and others as world literature, but also 
uh, literary models like uh, surrealism as world literature, or even uh, crime fiction as world literature. That is, uh, it is being written, crime fiction in Britain, in Belgium, in France, in Romania, everywhere. And it is part of a world system, of, a, of, a, of an international literary and cultural paradigm. And there is even one book on one single author, Roberto Bolaño as world literature, famous and now very uh, fashionable writer, late writer, um, discussed as one possible example of how world literature as a network of features as a, a paradigm is working. Uh, uh, Romanian literature as world literature fits in very well in this along this line it's it's a perfect i think uh, uh, proposal to the editors of the series and it is very uh, uh, very good thing that uh, uh, cristian moraru and andre terian uh, outstanding uh, i should even say still young even for you cristian <laughs> Uh, literary critics uh, plus uh, our professor uh, Mircea Martin uh, have uh, gathered a number of authors to discuss Romanian literature, Romanian uh, issues, features, literary forms, authors, uh, epochs from this international perspective. Uh, we did that in the Romanian culture in the last about 200 years, almost. But we did it for local audiences, <coughs> for ourselves. The problem of uh, uh, why was Romanian literature not recognized as such, as a world literature, is not a problem of, it should not be rephrased as Romanian literature has not been a world literature and it starts being now or recently. No, it has simply been ignored as all smaller, peripheral literatures have been. The traditional uh, world literature system has been until very recently uh, a, uh, a European uh, uh, paradigm based on the contribution of, uh, I think, five literatures. Full stop. The British, the French, the German, the Italian, the Spanish. Later on, the Russian. Uh, there's a whole discussion worldwide about uh, the literary canon, about alternatives to the European canon, but that's world literature. That has been world literature, and probably it will continue to be with all things which add around that. Uh, literature beyond Europe, from all other continents and literatures from within Europe which but which have been ignored so far. From this point of view the, this book does a major thing. It, it, it uh, fulfills a, a tremendous job translating but this time not in the sense of translating from one language to another but from one descriptive critical idiom into another uh, what has always been uh, the nature of Romanian literature as a normal European literature. Uh, uh, you asked me a question about how uh, does this uh, look from a historical perspective. It is uh, a book which has a very important, very hard uh, historical dimension, but it's not exclusive. This is not a history of Romanian literature, not a brief history, not a dictionary of authors, despite the fact that there are many authors mentioned here and uh, many epochs and uh, uh, again the historical dimension is always present, but it is balanced by what you probably uh, uh, noticed on yourselves. Uh, when Christian Moraru described the book, and then Andre Terian and Dorian Brana, um, the descriptions uh, have been uh, basically theor theoretical and not historical. 
that is uh, this kind of uh, literary history uh, is a sort of a uh, theor theor a theoretical perspective of what literary history might be, should be discussed about, and so on. Um, that's why concepts are very important, the perspectives, the, the methodological perspectives are very important. Um, and uh, this makes this book, um, and I don't mean anything uh, uh, critical in that, negative in that, uh, clearly an academic book. Mm. Uh, you also notice, I did, we all did, uh, that uh, Christian and Andre they have been a little bit provocative, speaking about the manifesto, about uh, being polemical with this book, but it is not a book for wide audiences. Yeah. It is and very I should say it's not, it's not the first book for a foreign audience about Romanian issue. It must be the second or the third one after one uh, readership <coughs> has um, has. Uh, 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 yes and no. Uh, some, uh, you need a sort <laughs> of a, some sort of initiation yes, in order to get to this. But what I mean, maybe I will say that, and I will need to stop after that. Uh, uh, you need an initiation. Uh, one needs an initiation before reading this yeah. book, uh, either in the Romanian history, of literature, of culture because it's not easy to understand things which are being discussed here about authors and epochs if you don't know anything about them. But alternatively, you have one has to be initiated theoretically in the world literature. And then it is perfectly compatible. I can read myself, and you can, uh, Dorian, Doru, Even read a book about a literature we don't know, but uh, being previously already initiated in the language, the concepts, the perspective, the paradigm of yeah. world literature, Agreed. and then everything is compatible, and it's just an Ebrica. Uh, yes, uh, that's it. It's normal. It should be like that. Any country in Europe has a, a national literature, which is a world literature. It just has to be translated as such. Well, uh, thank you very much, Professor Lefter. I'm afraid we can't dwell too much on this uh, book because there are other books. Um, if you feel you are losing us, it's not <coughs> because of uh, the eloquence of my guest, which is uh, brilliant, as you have noticed. It's because you don't have enough wine in your glasses. <laughs> so uh, uh, please help yourself <laughs> over there. It's, um, it's going to be a longer discussion, so it's, uh, you have to be to have the right fuel in order to, uh, to, to participate. It's, uh, it's a pity to, to let all these, these glasses um, um, uh, there. So, um, uh, I'm uh, yes, uh, can, can we, uh, can we um, save them for the, uh, for the later part in the conversation? Okay? Yeah, thank you. So, um, um, uh, I, I'm afraid we can't, we can't continue very much with this, uh, with this book, um, um, but I'd like to congratulate, it's definitely a very, uh, it's a timely book, uh, it is a book that is um, very well written, the, the concepts, the theoretical concepts, as Professor Lefter said, are perfectly um, uh, in tune with what's uh, now important in the academia, with the right approaches, with the novel, the, the original approaches, and definitely will uh, will recommend. It's not an easy book. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, you need you need to uh, to be patient with it, to uh, slowly discover it. But it's definitely a book. I um, I um, venture to uh, to say. It's a book that will um, uh, will um, uh, will uh, stir a lot of debates. Will uh, um, and and definitely will uh, provoke a new a new uh, perspective, a new vision on uh, Romanian literature for the general public and for the uh, the specialists. Congratulations, both of you and all the um, all the. Um, the, the contributor to this uh, to this book um, it's uh, it's
it's truly, and I, I think you have uh, you have understood it. It's a truly, uh, truly amazing, um, amazing book. Uh, we will uh, now go on with um, a book of poetry. Uh, it's now time for poetry, and maybe we can uh, even read some uh, one poem or maybe uh, maybe some more. Uh, I have the pleasure to um, to introduce um, uh, Magda Kurnej. Um, uh, indeed, one of the, um, the most important uh, authors, writers, um, uh, poets uh, in uh, Romanian uh, literature. Uh, Magda is a Romanian. Magda Kurnej is a Romanian writer, art historian, and curator, with a PhD in art history uh, at. Ecole des Hautes Etudes um, in Paris. At present, she is editor in chief of Arta magazine, the most important contemporary art magazine in Romania. Visiting professor uh, at the National University of, uh, of Ar uh, National University of Arts in Bucharest, and president of the Romanian Pan Club. Member of the famous 80s generation, which is um, uh, the first postmodern uh, generation in Romanian uh, culture, the first wave of postmodernism. She was one of the theori theoreticians of postmodernism in the local theorists of the postmodernism in local cultural milieu. After the revolution of December 1989, she became involved in the political and cultural Romanian, uh, the political scene as well, and the civic scene, starting with 2000. With the 2000s, she moved to Paris, where she was a um, guest lecturer, lecturer at Inalco University. And between 2006 and 2010, she was the director of the Romanian Cultural Institute in Paris, where she organized events like this, moderating them much better than me. Uh, she published many books of poetry and uh, essays on modern and contemporary art. Some of her books were translated in English, French, Italian, and Dutch. She is widely translated in uh, in English, uh, with um, but in collection of uh, of poems and in um, uh, in um, uh, special issues of uh, of uh, magazines like uh, Modern Poetry and uh, in translations. But now she is um, she is she is uh, re-entering the. Uh, British, uh, British um, uh, literary scene with a, a book uh, of poetry, a deafening, a deafening um, silence uh, that uh, truly proves the the range of this poet, the sensibility, the themes. Um, is it a collection of poetry, or was a book, the especially okay, the? I, I know that Professor Lefter knows the answer, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I like to uh, Magda Kurnej to reveal what it is behind this book, what is the meaning of this title, and maybe uh, read a poem uh, for us. Yes, uh, thank you, Dorian, for this um, warm presentation. And um, well, uh, yes, it's a coherent book. It's a, a worm that appeared in this uh, way in Romanian many years ago, um, in the in, in the eighties, at the end of the eighties, and um, I think it, it is my second book of poetry, um, and the title is a deafening silence because I wanted to create um, a contradictory metaphor or an oxymoron. Um, which means to put together two uh, contradictory terms. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, a deafening silence, uh, uh, a deafening yeah. silence, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, a deafening silence. <laughs> we are talking about the silence, but still we need to use the microphones. <laughs> yeah. It, it's becoming too deafen deafening. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just like. Um, like a uh, definition of poetry for me, um, because poetry uh, starts from words, but uh, what uh, is intended is to transcend words and to arrive at a state of mind or state of spirit which is uh, larger than words and then and then silence, uh, a state of mind which, for me, for example means to, uh, in, to, 
transcend my, my, my limitations and to project myself uh, at a universal dimension or uh, in the cosmos. So this is a special volume in my, in, in my poetry, um, which was related also with a kind of crisis. I, mm. I, uh, we are in the 80s right now, yes, right? we are years born. Yes, yes, <laughs> just in the, in the uh, worst period of the, of the 80s. And I also was passing through a dark, bad cold, uh, yeah, oppressive, yeah, po poverty, and so. famine, mm -hmm. more or less. Yes, and it was also a bad period for my myself. And uh, this uh, pushed me in the direction of uh, uh, denying a little bit the, the reality around around me and uh, uh, focusing on something which is beyond, which has not to do with this. Mm, uh, trivial limitations of body and our and suffering and ne needs of any kind and with a desire to to go inside uh, more profoundly in order to find something which is beyond all this. So echoes of history are not to be found in your book. Not exactly they are so uh, They are so transformed, so transgressed that you uh, that the, the 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 immediate history that was so oppressive and so difficult and the personal crisis are totally sublimated. That's right, exactly. But in my first volume, which uh, which I published before this, uh, I had this kind of um, um, elements uh, related to our uh, yeah. common uh, life and to our to the the difficulties of. Uh, living uh, in Romania at that the time. time, mm. at the time and it was part of the generation aesthetics, right? right to right. leave these uh, elements of reality uh, into your poems. Uh, yes, uh, yes, maybe Jon Bogdan left, uh, uh, could say even better than me, um, the first books of um, our generation uh, which entitled itself uh, postmodernist, mm -hmm. um, were very prosaic, were mm -hmm. very much um, rooted in, in everyday in life. Everyday and life and yes, and uh, it was also a sort of manifesto against what was happening, mm -hmm. but in another way uh, than this uh, this book, uh, because even before. Um, the, gener the previous generation of poets uh, from the 60s and 70s uh, were also uh, writing a, a poetry, a so-called neo-modernist poetry, which mm. was also an abstract poetry, um, uh, not related to uh, what was happening around because it was not possible. Mm. There, there was censorship, uh, uh, there was a, a kind of elusive discourse uh, which uh, was taking uh, place. Many things could not be said at the time, and that's right. why they uh, they moved to uh, to a different language. Right. Um, but wh why did you choose this uh, volume for the uh, for the your uh, your British readership? Well, this is more or less a um, um, uh, haphazard. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that uh, my translation... You said you didn't speak English very well, but now on the contrary, you speak mm -hmm. so well. Because well, um, uh, Marta I mean, I'm, allu I'm alluding to, um, uh, to a, a conversation we had. Uh, Magda was uh, part of a panel this morning at the book fair about, the, 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 about editing, about publishing, about translating. And she, she, she be began her, her intervention by saying, I'm sorry for my English. And then followed something that, to me, <laughs> was, uh, was a very good English. And um, you don't have any problem with that. So, <laughs> um, so it, was, uh, it was by chance that you, uh, you pick up, uh, picked up this, uh, this volume, right? Yeah, my, my American translator, uh, Adam J. Sorkin, had all the volume translated. He was our guest in our previous uh, Romanian program at the book fair, right? Or where? Yeah. Where we it? had a launch of the poem, <laughs> poem magazine. A poem magazine, yeah. yeah. A couple of, uh, last year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And many of the, uh, those poems already translated were not published. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so Adam wanted very much to have these poems uh, published. So it was very much <coughs> his choice of... Uh... It, it, it was very much his proposal. Mm -hmm. And he insisted, and the editor, um, Tony Fraser, who is the director of this publishing house called um, Shears Man Book, Books, um, uh, liked this, this uh, volume of poetry because I sent to him um, several uh, mm. series of poems from different, uh, other different volumes of mine, mm. Mm. but he wanted to have a, a whole volume from the beginning to the end. So and this coincided uh, with uh, with your preference, with with, yeah. with, uh, with my yeah. trans translator uh, preference preference yeah. and so uh, I said why not mm. and um, were you surprised by the choice? Yeah, a little bit. Little I was a little bit surprised because um, you would have chosen maybe other poems. Uh, yeah, or more recent one mm -hmm. be ones because, because you're uh, closer to them. And yeah, so. we, uh, yes, yes. Let's see. Let's let's hear uh, w one poem to see why what is uh, what is that. Maybe we can we can distinguish why was uh, why this uh, the, the editor and uh, and uh, Adam had this choice. Uh, will be maybe in... Uh, uh, in English or in Romanian? Uh, oh. You can do both, uh, because I'd like, I mean, if it's a poem, I, I think Romanian and English would work. And both? Both, yeah. Maybe a, a short one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's your choice. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, the authors that are launched have always, uh, are, are always coming before the moderate. Uh, so, um, you can choose to yeah. read the whole volume. First <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. in, in Romania. Yeah, it would be great. O mână imensă Gloria de flacără a dimineții Înaintez oarbă prin lumina densă, solidă Mă clatin, n-am voie să mă clatin Port în mine ceva mai explosiv decât dinamita, mai puternic decât neantul. Roza tumoral aurorală a lumii, petalele ei se desfac încet în creierul meu, carbonizat ca o planetă contemplându-se, incendiată. Îi simt mirosul tare de cadavru și prunc, stând gata să înflorească. Îi aud respirația grea. Se deschide încet în creierul meu trandafirul cu un milion de petale. Picături de sudoare și sânge cad fără sunet. Se pregătește să iasă, să iasă, să iasă. O mână imensă mă poartă în palmă. An immense hand. The fire glory of the morning. I advance blind through the dense light, solid. I stagger. It's not permitted for me to stagger. I bear within me something more explosive than dynamite, more corrosive than nothingness. The tumoral dawn rose of the world. Its patterns slowly unfurl in my brain, carbonized. Like a self-contemplating planet in flames, all in flames. I smell its acrid reek of corpse and child ready to bloom. I hear its tremulous respiration. Slowly it unfurls in my brain the rose with millions of petals, droplets of sweat and silent blood dripping down, making ready to come down, come down, come down. An immense hand holds me in its palm. Thank you.
there is no better presentation of a poet than uh, the poetry, uh, the poetry itself. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Magda, uh, for this uh, for this reading. I'm sure you'll have the, the pleasure to discover all the other poems. Um, um, this is an amazing, amazing poetry by definitely one of the, the best poets of uh, today's uh, today's uh, Romania. Um, and now um, I'd like to um, pass on to um, a, um, a wonderful lady. Um, um, maybe you know that um, increasingly more uh, British people are choosing to live in Romania. And they are um, uh, buying homes there, uh, they are making, uh, making a life there, they even they even spend more time in Romania there than uh, in Britain. And moreover, they are um, uh, developing, uh, they are not only making a life for themselves, but are developing um, institutions, they are writing books, they are organizing festivals, they are uh, bringing uh, British friends, and they are creating uh, a, a very interesting British Romanian uh, Romanian projects and, uh, and 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 networks that are changing sometimes changing the face of some um, uh, some um, uh, communities and I have the pleasure to um, welcome um, uh, um, Arabella McIntyre Brown. Uh, I will introduce uh, I will introduce you um, right away. If I, uh, can find the uh, <laughs> among my uh, my papers. Um, Arabella McIntyre Brown has lived in a Carpathian mountain village for eight years, writing um, books and watching uh, live at one thousand meters high and at the altitude. She was born and bred in the, in a Sussex village on the South Towns, so after 30 years in London and Liverpool, she has returned to her rural roots, albeit in Transylvania rather than Southern England. In the UK, she had, uh, she had won awards as a business journalist before writing her first book in 2001. Liverpool, the first 1,000 years, was a regional bestseller, outdoing Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Delia that Christmas. <laughs> uh, which is uh, quite an achievement. <laughs> Nine more non-fiction books uh, followed before um, five uh, family deaths in a year prompted, uh, prompted her to move to Romania. In 2006, um, uh, All Publishing Lives published her story of life in Transylvania uh, in Liverpool and Carpath, uh, so from Liverpool to the Carpathians, um, a stake in Transylvania. In uh, 2017, another Bucharest publisher, Booklet Fiction, published her first two children's books. The third comes out in May, and probably we'll speak about this one that is mysterious. Uh, it's not even here, but uh, somehow it's present, uh, and, and I know you want to talk about it. She has uh, two non-fiction books and a crime novel in progress. Turning 60 this month, she feels she is just getting started. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, so uh, Arabella, thank you for taking your time uh, and coming from your, uh, no doubt, beautiful village in uh, Transylvania, descending in central London, where the uh, air is so pure, as we know so well. Um, um, What's the name of the village? Where is it? Malgura. Malgura where? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it's um, for those who have not visited yet uh, Transylvania, which I urge you to do um, very, very shortly, it's one of the most beautiful uh, parts of uh, Romania and defi definitely a part of Romania that one would not want to leave so uh, so easily and definitely... Definitely we not for Liverpool. Liverpool <laughs> 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 and Romania has, have a lot in common, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I now want to pass the, the microphone. I won't I use the mic. You, you won't use the mic, okay? Can you all hear me? Yes. <laughs> 
thank you. I feel so deeply underqualified to be here tonight with all these amazing people. Um, but I, I can't claim to write literature, but I, I, I claim to write books. Um, that's all. So uh, when I went to my village, moved there eight years ago, my neighbours were saying, why are you here? I mean, why? Do you like it here? And I said, yes, I bought a house here. But do you like it? Do you like us? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, and they were very curious, of course, because I was the first foreigner to be in the village. Um, and they said, do you have children? I said, no. Do you have a husband? No. <laughs> <laughs> Transylvania brought me back to life. <laughs> um, and then in 2016, 15, I was at Guardiano's book festival in Bucharest, the big book fair, and um, a publisher uh, who was a, we had a mutual friend, we met and we chatted, and then sometime later she sent me an email, which I, I, I should blow up and frame it because she said if you ever write a book please tell me because we would like to publish it now any writers here will know <laughs> what extraordinary sentence that was so I wrote one and they published it it can't be translated into English this message <laughs> it can be uttered only in Romanian exactly uh, no, no English writer would be able to comprehend that. Uh, <laughs> that that's right, yeah. Anyway, so it was wonderful. Um, the, the book came out, a stake in Transylvania, uh, in uh, Romanian translation, but um, the English version will come out sometime this year. Please God. Um, and uh, perhaps it will be on sale in Waterstreet. That would be fantastic. Um, and then Booklet Fiction, the publisher there, who I knew, rang me up and said, uh, we need a book for the May Book Fest in Bucharest. Can you write it in a month? <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> so uh, I researched this book and wrote it. And it's called Dragons Over London. Uh, um, and out it came. And it's about a Chinese dragon who finds his way to the Tower of London in 1008 AD, just after the White Tower had been built. And there he lived. There is a well. If you go down to the bottom of the tower, there is a well. And Chinese dragons love water. And that's where he lived. <laughs> and still lives. Uh, if you go to the Tower of London and look really hard, you might just see the flicker of the tail. <laughs> Anyway, so this came out, and the response from the kids was fantastic. Kids are fantastic critics. They're kinder than grown-up critics. But non, non critical critics. <laughs> no, they're not uncritical at all. No? No. But they're very sweet and generous, and they tell you what they like, and they tell you what they don't like. They're very straight. Fantastic. I love writing for children. <laughs> They're so sweet. You know, if they like the book, they'll just come up and give you a massive group hug. <laughs> it's, it's, they're adorable. Um, so that is the extent of my uh, Romanian literature so far. The next book um, was uh, called Flos Catalusul Pierdut. Flos the Lost Puppy. And it's, it's a very simple story. It's set in a village not unlike the one I live in. 
um, and the fictional village is called, those of you of a bookish mind will get the pun, the English name is Hay, <laughs> and the Romanian name is, I can't, I can never pronounce this properly, Fun. Yeah, no, you pronounce it very well. <laughs> Um, it's hey. a simple story. It's actually 100% true. It's wow. the story of a lost puppy who turned up at my door one day in November, and uh, it was the perfect Hollywood pattern. You know, a risingly happy story, and then a big drop, and then a massive drop, and a happy ending. Um, and it's, it's quite emotional. The conflict is all inside the central character here, Sarah, who is nine. Uh, she's scared of dogs, so she has to learn, but she can't bear the thought of this dog dying, of starvation in the snow. So she puts her fears to one side and allows the dog to come in with the family. So I've become a Romanian family, much more interesting. And um, so she then falls in love with the dog, but her brother sneezes, he's allergic to the dog. So she realises she has to let the dog go to another home, which is terribly sad. So it's, it's very simple, but it's very common. You know, it's, a, it's a common story. Anyway, it's done really, really well. The publishers are thrilled a bit, they've sold lots. Um, <laughs> so they've commissioned a sequel, which I have to finish by the end of June. Um, and in the meantime, in May, at Bookfest in Bucharest, comes out another Hay book, called Dahlia's Pet Detectives. Dahlia is a, is a nine-year-old girl, um, and she has a friend called Chip, Chipperian, uh, who is deaf. He's, it's, he's an interesting character. Um, and Dahlia has a pet cat called Onyx, and a pet crow. It's a wild crow, but it loves her. And they become village detectives, and they have little adventures. It's a chapter book, so they have tiny little adventures in every chapter. Um, and it was just such fun to write. So uh, all the children's books now will be set in hay, so it becomes a little collection of stories. So, uh, and then where do we go from there? Who knows? I'm having phenomenal fun. Romanian publishers are great. Everyone is incredibly supportive, including the Romanian Cultural Institute, who brought me here and been so supportive and kind. I'm thrilled to be here, and it's wonderful to write in Romania for responsive audiences and I hope I'll be able to carry on writing for some time yet. <laughs> <laughs>
So, uh, you know, the, the, the libraries are full of Romanian books or uh, Romanian poets uh, already translated, collections of poetry and so on. We have amazing children's books and writers that are equally British and Romanian that are bringing, you know, this fusion, this fantastic fusion that I think it's, it's the way forward. Uh, for the British writers and for the Romanian writers. My book and many others are now bilingual, Romanian and English, to help children learn English and to help English-speaking children learn Romanian because of the expansion there. That was a, it's a great way of, of teaching as well as encouraging them to read and, one hopes, encouraging them to write one day. Yeah, I, 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 I very much believe so. And I, I like very much the way that you know, the Romanian reality, the Romanian uh, environment is, um, uh, is captured in the books, uh, in one character or in, you know, uh, in a situation. But the book is still uh, meaningful and interesting for, for instance, here in Britain, in central, uh, in, uh, central uh, London. So that's why I believe that this way of writing, you know, somehow very much connected in, in a way to, uh, to the book about the, how a book can become more universal or more um, uh, accepted, liked, read throughout the world. I think the connection is uh, there for, um, for one to, uh, to see. And this diversity goes f uh, to another expression of uh, academic uh, creativity. And I have uh, now the pleasure to um, introduce, I, I am not doing it for the first time, because he's a prolific writer and, uh, and, um, and a, a very good f a friend of mine, a man that I admire very much, um, a Professor uh, Marius uh, Turda, um, dealing with a subject that is not uh, uh, funny at all and not uh, and quite, uh, quite disturbing, I should say. Um, I'll tell you very shortly what's, uh, what's all about. But before that, I'd like to um, introduce um, uh, Marius. Marius is, Turta is Associate uh, Professor at the Faculty of History, Philosophy and Religion, Oxford Brookes University, and Director of its Center for Medical Humanities. He is the Founder and Director of the Cantemir uh, Institute at the University of Oxford and founder, founder of the Working Group on the History of Eugenics and Race, established in 2006. Between 2010 and 2014, he was Deputy Director at the Center for Health, Medicine and Society. He is Fellow of the Royal Historical Society and Fellow of the Galton Institute. His current uh, areas of research are Racism and Race, History of Eugenics, theories of ethnic specificity and national character, and ethnic utopias, with a special reference to East Central Europe. Recent, uh, recent publications include The History of East Central European Eugenics, 1900-1945, Sources and Commentaries, uh, Latin Eugenics in Comparative Perspective, 2016, The History of Eugenics in East Central Europe, 1900-1945, um, Eugenics and a uh, Nation in Early 20th uh, Century Hungary uh, in 2014. Uh, these books are translated in Rumanian, some of them translated in Romanian and in, in other languages, making uh, Professor Turda uh, one of the most uh, authority, <coughs> one of the great authorities, I should say, academic authorities when it comes to racial history, the theory of race, and, uh, and uh, eugenics. Um, his latest book is, of course, uh, also about, uh, about race. It's, in fact, a history of the idea of race, of racism. And, uh, and um, uh, like all his books, it is somewhere at the intersection of politics, culture, medical science, and ideology. Uh, Barnes, would you like to say a few words about your book? Show it to us. Would you try? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it is a, a real pleasure to uh, to join um, your panel. Um, I felt a bit, you know, out of uh, depth when I when I was hearing you talking, Arabella, about. Uh, 
uh, your, your book for the children, and then I was thinking, oh gosh, and then I come here uh, talking about uh, race <laughs> and xenophobia <laughs> and discriminatory uh, <laughs> practices against black people and <laughs> East Europeans and uh, so on and so forth. But then I realised this is actually a connection, and I like the fact that you brought up uh, criticism a young audience offers a writer or an author because uh, and I should like to start with this point about mm. my book uh, this is not a book for specialists I've written books for specialists um, for many years and they're a good bunch of people but they're really boring and in many ways uh, <laughs> they don't really push the boundaries of knowledge um, certainly do not push the boundaries of the impact of certain ideas amongst the public as we would like to think. So then I decided to take another, um, to take another approach and uh, write a book for my students. Mm. And they are indeed very critical. <laughs> so if the students like, and they read your book, and uh, whenever, so this book came out about a month ago, and a student of mine already emailed me saying, I read your book and I liked it. That was the highest compliment I received in my life. <laughs> I mean, my books are reviewed favorably, um, more, more or less. And I receive accolades from many universities, but I was never so pleased. There's one student saying, I actually read your book. You know, classically, students not read the books of their professors. So that's actually a standard procedure. In Britain, at least in Romania, of course, they're more disciplined. <laughs> so there's the first caveat I should like to introduce. Uh, this is not a book for specialists, it's a book for the general public. However, it is written with a very pedagogical aim, because it is for my students. It is for students in general. Uh, and the second argument is that I wanted to write a book that actually allows them, allows young audiences, but also sort of the general public, to come to terms with some very difficult topics, whilst being interested in what's happening around us at the moment. So this book is written from a very contemporary perspective. So it is, you know, it is in the light of Brexit and Donald Trump and Victor Orban and other people. Uh, and whilst I use that as a sort of a window into the history of a certain idea. So I use big themes, I use the theme of history, or the theme of uh, culture, or the theme of civilization, to understand why British people think the way they think, or why Hungarians think the way they think. The third argument is the more philosophical, uh, because I, 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 I try to introduce a very important question. Can you write about race, not being black, or not being of colored? You know, can you write about race being white? Can you write about race, secondly, being not or not having experienced a racial history? I can't claim to have experienced a colonial past the way a British person or a French or a Dutch or a Belgian would. Yeah. And then, of course, they write in a way as like justifying and excusing, excusing themselves. Yes, we've done a lot of good things, and of course, we've also done, done some bad things. Can we write epistemologically a book? Can we understand something which is utterly universal? The way people look at each other, the way people treat each other, without having that kind of package. And of course, this is what the uh, Romanian episode comes in, the East European part of my life comes in, because I actually can understand the language of oppression and subjugation having been born in an East European country. So although I haven't lived in the colonial context, I haven't lived in the racial context per se, I did understand that the essential pillars of how a racial system is being organized, which is basically about considering other people being different, being inferior, being less valued, and so on and so forth. Now, when I came to Britain about 25 years ago, I was telling you this story, uh, of course, there was a lot of, uh, sort of internal orientalism going on. A lot of people in Britain and in Western Europe generally looked at Europeans, you know, the gypsies from Romania, and uh, so on and so forth in a very sort of negative way. And of course, I mean, I was quite fortunate because I mean, my family comes from Northern Transylvania, so if I said Transylvania, of course, I was in a way protected. However, I could understand why they would think in this way, and I could also understand why East Europeans would feel this way. So I put this aside for a long time, you know, the kind of the rudiments of thinking about the instrumentalized power of thinking about others in a very bad way. And I went on and wrote my books about eugenics and about sort of East European history and so on and so on. And then I came back and decided, well, I really have to come to, to, you know, 
take the bull by, by, by the horns and actually write about things that matter to me directly and write about them in a way like they try with the Romanian literature. When I look at history, history literature on, on races and race, they use the ideal type. So you have a lot of books about Britain, a lot of books about France, some books about Belgium, none of the few books about France so and Germany. So the ideal types. But of course, my interest was to write a history of race that brings in you know, the Romanians, bring in the Greeks, beautiful stories about Greek racism, as we know, and bring in the Poles and the Hungarians. Mm -hmm. So again, having the knowledge of that part of the world helped tremendously. Uh, and uh, so in the end, I was able to actually write something which is in a way quite, should I use the word journalistic? Yeah, it's like after four glasses of wine, I suppose. Completely <laughs> 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 self um, It is written in a way that actually tries to, to explain it, uh, explain very sophisticated things, but in a very accessible way. And I suppose you know some journalists who are very good at their craft. Would, this is what they try to do. Uh, so um, these are in a way the ambitions uh, of the book. You see. So ironically, uh, some people who wouldn't really consider that Romania should appear in the global history of race uh, would be very surprised to find certain Romanian authors. But uh, of course, this is not to write about them negatively, or to write about them. You have to read all of these ideas in the context of the time, say if it's 19th century or 18th century or early 20th century, then try to understand that actually, of course, the Romanian writer in the 1920s were completely global in his perception of issues such as identity or culture or civilization. He might have, of course, he felt slightly on the margins, but in terms of, I mean, they all, of, all of them were reading the same things in many ways. Yeah, Spengler or, I don't know, Schopenhauer or whatever, you know, you name it. So they didn't feel at all marginal. And of course, with that came also a way of reading history and culture according to the Western pattern. So if someone in Britain would read the contribution of British Empire to the world in a racial way, a Romanian writer of the 1920s would try to read the Romanian past in a racial way. It was absolutely identical. They didn't have any problems. Why? They wouldn't do it. Now, of course, this is 1920s. Now, there's another interesting element to this book, and we discussed this again this morning, is that I did not see that coming so forcefully so recently in terms of what's happening in, in Europe uh, at the moment. Uh, so you have a lot of revival of ethnic nationalism that uses very subtle racism. And, of course, these are sort of ethnic mythologies that were constructed you know, over centuries. So of course when you hear someone like Viktor Orban saying we want Hungary to be Hungary that was a thousand years ago. Yeah. Um, of course you ought to understand that within the entire constellation of Hungarian culture. And it doesn't go back two years ago. It goes back, you know, 150 years ago when they constructed the entire sort of mythopoeia of their sort of national language, national culture, national identity. Uh, the same with the Greeks, when they say you are, we are born at the bottom of the Acropolis and we are the descendants of the Greeks. Of course, you could deride that kind of claim and you could say, well, it's utter rubbish. But uh, to a Greek, it, 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 it's, for them, it's absolutely essential that they have that sort of historical legitimacy, constancy across time. Uh, and I could give examples from, you know, from the British Isles as well, of course, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you could see that thing coming back, regrettably, with the US um, turning so sort of, you know, crypto uh, diabolic. It's, it's, it's difficult to really separate uh, a lot of the intellectual rhetoric about race from pure sort of, you know, um, utter misuse of power for political gain. Um, and of course, there was a lot of discussion about Donald Trump being a racist during the campaign. But actually, you know, in many ways, or being a fascist and so on and so forth. But ultimately, of course, he's an extremely crafty politician. He knows exactly how to speak to each group of people, uh, which makes him extremely charismatic and very successful, of course. But it's very hard to pin down these kind of people, you see. It's very hard to go after him and say, well, you said this. People around him would say nastier things, but he would always be very... And then uh, there is a... So that always remains, I suppose, um, in the subtext of my analysis in terms of why 
we need to constantly attack the centre of, sort of intellectual power. There's a big discussion in this country, of course, some of you will know, about you know, diversifying the curricula. We need to write the history of the world from a non-Western perspective, not white. True, but we also need to write, to write the history of the history from our perspective, which is actually you know, common people, people the way we feel it and we see it. And that's very hard, because first of all, you have to accept that, well, we're not perfect. So yet, maybe, we do say every now and then some bad things about other people. And then we move on and try to be constructive and try to build, maybe not as radical as Arabella, move all of us move to Transylvania. <laughs> um, that would be quite terrible, actually, if all of us <laughs> <laughs> would destroy that place in time. <laughs> but that's one form of trying to come to terms with the disenchantment of the world that we're experiencing, we, we, we need to go back to certain values um, and redefine those values and redefine cohesion, redefine solidarity and ultimately redefine respect for each other and redefine hope. Yeah. Hope is the, the most important thing and we can't really build something for the future if it's utter distrust and always sort of constant negation of you know, social ties and um, community values and so on and so forth. So I wrote this book, you know, like you say, you know, or you have uh, three weeks to write a book, yeah, there you go, you sit down, um, out of passion for a topic, but also because, you know, I'm troubled by what's happening around us, and I think we need to be more, we can't be in an ivory tower as intellectuals or as academics, we need to get out, we need to be accessible to the public, we need to speak to the public, and we need to tell them, now look, you know, we actually can understand it, and we treated you with, action, with, you know, with indifference uh, because we never, we never bothered until it's too late. Now we all complain, of course. Oh my God, they are in power now. And but we had the moment we actually we could do a lot of things, but we didn't do it because we were just high there. We didn't care. We were just, you know, academic. Uh, and then we are to be blamed for that. We are to be blamed for a lot of things, and we need to be more engaging and we need to be more uh, honest with our crafts. And um, I think all of us here have been doing this in our own ways, and that's absolutely wonderful, you know, because we with poetry, literary analysis, or, you know, books for children, uh, or, you know, the book about race. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Marius, for this uh, this talk. Um, this book can be, uh, you know, the, the, the academic ones, but even the more accessible ones can be quite disturbing. But some of the quotations are so hard to read, um, to, uh, and definitely very uh, almost impossible to read loudly or to speak, you know, because some of these ideas are so outrageously. Uh, against what we believe that is uh, it's unimaginable. But now, uh, I think uh, race or no race, uh, no matter what race we are, we will be kicked out of this uh, uh, bookstore in about uh, 10 minutes, I'm told. So no racial discrimination here, <laughs> trust me. And um, I think we have uh, two books just, and I would like to ask Professor uh, uh, left them just to present them very very quickly so that um, we are not closed down here in the basement of uh, Waterstones and uh, emerge here. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Um, I spent 15 years in Athens, I became Greek, mm. we won't go into that. <laughs> I'd like to wish you very well because a couple of years ago there was a terrible wave of racism, particularly against Romanians and Bulgarians, and I work you all here, um, and I'd like to say, I'd just like to ask you, because having, I mean, I'm a communist, but anyway, let's hide that, um, how many nations emerged in Eastern Europe, eight, nine, I mean, the East Germans had no choice, they had to join Merkel, but the rest, I mean, how does their approach, and I laud your approach, I, I don't know much, I'm a scientist, how does their individual, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Czech, you know what I mean, Poland, do they have a different approach to yours? I, I don't know. But um, welcome anyway, and I hope you sell many copies. Are <laughs> yeah, you talking about the world? The, 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 world, uh, the approach on literature. 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 
Only in the sense that in 1989, 1990, a number of nations emerged that the West was not aware of. I had been in Poland in 1988, but anyway, that's another story. Um, so your efforts, because um, apart from the big five that, or six that you mentioned, a lot of the world feels shame. We don't have a culture. We don't have this. We don't. Even the Americans, they have to make up all sorts of stuff not to feel shame compared to the Europeans. But the Europeans are gone. The French are gone, the English are gone. All those empires are gone. Where did they go? Where did they go? <laughs> well, they're not in Africa no more. Oh. Mandela has done that. Okay. So their empires are history, just like the Austria Hungary. All those empires are history. Now, unfortunately, we have this. Terrorizing empire. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not trying. No, no, no. My it's a, it's, a, it's a very back. interesting question, and yes. may I ask you to to answer to it uh, later, so that we can present these books. Yes, and uh, cool. and I think it's because it needs uh, um, quite a bit of elaboration. And well, I'm afraid. Oh, no, I'll try to the question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. It's a it's a very interesting one. Yes. Professor Lefter, very very quickly, um, yes. just uh, to show these books. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, without any preparation and development, uh, a quick answer to your question would be what I tried at a certain moment to say previously, namely that all European literatures are world literature, are European literatures, no matter whether they have been or not known in the major dominant uh, Western countries. One of the, uh, the titles, the books in this uh, series, uh, Literatures as World Literature, uh, is the Danish Literature as World Literature. It is equally the same situation. Uh, the Western uh, culture, mainly the dominant Western culture, look at Central European literatures and East European literatures as the cases of unknown literatures, but there are unknown literatures in the West also. How many Danish writers do we know, all of us here? One or two or none. So it's the same, they, they, they did exist as a nation, they did have a national literature, it was compatible with world literature, but it is not so well known because of historical reasons. Uh, so um, I, uh, I was, Prepare. I was asked to present the books of authors who are not here, mm -hmm. and their books are recently published in English and should also be part of this uh, presentation. Um, in fact, uh, no matter how many they are, the three plus Magda four and our colleagues um, who co-edited the book on Romanian literatures, literature and Professor Turda and so on, they are uh, all of them uh, examples of uh, Romanian books and thinking and writing, uh, uh, illustrating one or the other generations which have been active in the last decades, uh, forms of uh, literature, rhetorics, uh, and so on, various kinds of expressing a diversity, a cultural and liter literary diversity. Uh, two books have recently uh, been published in English, uh, belonging books by uh, authors who have uh, become famous quite young uh, during the late 60s and into the 70s, namely uh, Matei Kalinescu, who, uh, who was born in 1934, I think. He died uh, at 75 uh, several years ago, uh, a literary critic but also writing poetry, several collections of poems, uh, a book of uh, fiction, and an emigre to the United States uh, when he was 30-something uh, years old. Uh, an outstanding uh, professor at the University of uh, Indiana Bloomington, uh, author of several, two or three books which did circulate widely in the academic world uh, in North America and worldwide uh, on modernism, postmodernism, uh, rereading, and so on. And now it is so interesting that uh, uh, the publication of this book 
focuses on him, on Matei Kalinescu, Kalinescu um, uh, as a fiction writer. He did publish, he did write only one book, a short book, uh, published in Romania in 1969 and then in a second edition in 1971, two years ago, several years ago, uh, several years before his uh, um, uh, travel to America. And uh, it is a sort of a parable, uh, it's called The Life and Opinions of Zachar Zacharias Lichter, Zaharias Lichter, we pronounce it in Romanian, um, uh, a book about a character, this Zachariah Lichter, who is a sort of an um, intellectual Picaro, uh, no uh, big spectacular narrative is to be found here. It's just a collection of uh, chapters about what uh, Lichter is thinking on life, death, uh, philosophy, society, anything. And he's always very original, very, uh, he's fantasizing a lot, he's imprevisible, he's very scholarly, he knows a lot, he has read a lot, and the book is a sort of a book in the um, uh, tradition of, uh, for instance, uh, old uh, English uh, uh, 18th century, maybe uh, philosophical essays or something like that. Uh, the book is uh, introduced by Norman Mania, who is uh, the best uh, uh, known Romanian writer abroad these years. Uh, the second book is uh, The Son of Hereafter and About the Senses by Anna Blandiana, one of the most famous uh, uh, poets in Romania, belonging to the same generation as uh, uh, Matei Kalinescu. Uh, more recent uh, poems of hers, uh, two books published uh, in the last decade. Um, Magda Kornec uh, has already illustrated the next generation after Blandiana and Matei Kalinescu. And the last book I should have said something about is Matei Brunul by Lucian Dante Odorovic, a very interesting novel uh, with a brief but uh, outstanding preface by David Lodge. Um, uh, in English, for the English translation. Uh, Matei Brunul, uh, the title has not been uh, translated because it was not easy to translate. Uh, it's about a character whose name actually is Matei Bruno, Bruno Matei. But in Romanian, Bruno sounds like brown, Brun. So he's always called in the novel Bruno, from Bruno. And uh, the translator, Lester Ian Black, decided to keep the title like that. It's a puppeteer who has uh, uh, lived uh, his uh, youth in uh, pre-communist Romania, emigrated to Italy during uh, the fascist years, back to Romania under communism, and then uh, a political prisoner in the Romanian gulag with lots of other things that have happened uh, to him during his life. A very interesting and, uh, and complex and moving. I should say that all these three books are very, very interesting. You can find them on the website. You can find them on our website. They will be available for you to buy. Now our puppeteers from the Waterstones are telling us that we must uh, wrap up, we must finish. I'd like to thank you for your patience. Uh, it's been a long <coughs> evening, but mostly I'd like to thank you, uh, the authors and the critics who have been uh, presenting these books and have been talking about these this, uh, wonderful ideas and interesting ideas and, and books and verses. Uh, thank you. I hope I'll see you. We will see you at the other events organized in the Romanian program at the London Book Fair. So thank you. Have a, a beautiful uh, evening and a beautiful rest of the part of the uh, of the Romanian program. Thank you.